Proudly, we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station to bring you this story, as proudly we hail the United States Army. Everybody's looking for something, but an American soldier named Bob Haley is looking for something special. He's looking for a certain girl. He knows everything about her except who she is. Today's story is titled, I'm Looking for a Girl. Our first act curtain rises in just a moment. But first, I want to bring a really important message to the recent high school graduates of America. By volunteering for the Army, you will have the opportunity to qualify for one of many different types of specialized training. Chances are, the type of technical training you've always wanted is one of those open to high school graduates. For instance, you might qualify for Army training in electricity, surgical, medical, or hospital technician procedures, automotive repair, utility repair, or one of many others. And don't forget, even while you're learning, you'll receive regular pay. Yes, high school graduates, find out what technical training the Army has to offer you today. Ask at your nearest United States Army recruiting station. Get all the facts on the world's finest technical courses. Be big. Be Army. And now, your United States Army presents the proudly we hail production, I'm Looking for a Girl. <laughs> Yeah, I can see it coming right now. One day, my grandchildren will say to me, Grandpa, what did you do when you were in the Army? And I'll have to tell them the truth. I'll have to tell them, well, kids, all I did was take pictures. Pictures, Grandpa, they'll ask, and I'll say, yeah, pictures. You know, the Army's a pretty complicated outfit. There's a lot of jobs a guy has to do, so when I joined the Army back in, oh, before I even met your grandma, they asked me what I thought I'd like to be. And I said, could I become a photographer? And they said, okay, we'll send you to school. And they did. Well, don't mind me, folks. It's just that I feel pretty good now, especially after what the colonel said. So maybe I do go around talking to myself. But, you know, even the colonel said, Haley, put in for a furlough. Relax, enjoy yourself. You got it coming. So I'm enjoying myself. The colonel said that what happened to me would make a pretty good story. I guess it would at that, you know. Hey, let me try it out on you, see what you think. I'll tell it exactly the way it happened. I won't leave out a thing. Well, it began one day three weeks ago when Sergeant Johnson said... Haley. Yes, yeah, Sarge? We don't have any good stock footage shots of West Berlin. Take the camera out and get it some, huh? Well, what are you after? Atmospheres, movement. Give us the famous Haley touch. Sarge, I'm on my way. Well, you see, I'm stationed here in Germany. My outfit makes training films. Naturally, as far as I'm concerned, there's no better assignment in the whole world. Now, this particular film was one that the Army wanted to show to men who just arrived on assignment to Germany. Kind of a informational movie to show them what the place looked like, things to do, places of interest to visit on time off, and stuff like that. I think it's a pretty good way to acquaint the troops on what their new surroundings are going to look like. Well, the sergeant was kidding, of course, about the Haley touch, but... Well, you see, when I take pictures, I, I just don't like to shoot buildings the way some guys do. I like to catch faces and atmosphere. You know, you kind of let the camera tell a story. So I went out that day, and I shot me a couple of hundred feet, and that was that. Or so I thought. Ellie. Hey, yeah, Sarge? I want you to look at one of the shots you took yesterday. I had a blow-up made out of it. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's just seen the streets. Bunch of people waiting for a bus. Nice composition of the faces, though, huh? To get the different attitudes of the people on their way to work. And hey, look at this big fat joker. <laughs> Just know he hates his job. Look at that skull. Forget about him. Look at the edge of the crowd. The girl. What girl? Oh, huh? What about her? Get a good look at that face. Yeah, it's interesting. Interesting? Is that all you can say about it? I can't take my eyes off her. Hey, Sarge. Hey, 
You were married, man. That's not what I'm talking about. Look at the expression you caught. Did you ever see anybody so scared in all your life? Look at her eyes. Hey, yeah, that's right. You know, if we clipped her out of this shot and made a single photograph out of her, you could win a prize in any competition in the whole world. You're a genius, Haley. Huh? You don't know enough to come in out of the rain, but you're a genius. Hey, yes, yeah, Sarge, I see it now. Hey, you're right, she's scared out of her wits. Haley, this is photography. This is the camera catching a mood and an expression. This is the shot a photographer dreams about. You didn't even know you had it. Well, I didn't even see her, Sarge. I was interested in the fat guy. She just happened to be in camera range. Okay, Haley, I just thought I'd let you know. Now, tomorrow you're going out on the range. We're going to start a film on small arms instruction. Oh. And listen, Haley, here you don't have to be an artist. Never mind the weird shots. Just show the rifles and the trigger squeeze and the sight picture, huh? Yeah, yeah, okay, sure, sir. Hey, let me look at that girl again, huh? Man, what a shot. What a shot. Well, did you ever look at a picture of a girl, a girl who was a complete stranger and just, well, kind of get interested in her? You know what I mean. Well, the more I looked at this girl, the more she started to get me. Oh, I would judge she was about 20, give or take a year or two. She had blonde hair, nice figure. She wasn't bad looking, but she would look much better if she didn't seem to be so scared. Well, what could she have been scared about, anyhow? Actually, the word scared isn't what I mean. She was more than scared. She was terrified. Or would you believe it? I couldn't get that girl out of my mind. I'd say to myself, now, look, Haley, just what is this girl? Are you anyhow, stop fooling around, will you? It was no good. I knew I had to meet that girl. At least I had to find out what she was so scared about. After a while, it got so I couldn't think about anything else. It even began to show up in my work. Hey, Haley. Uh, yes, yeah, Sarge? I should say a penny for your thoughts, but <laughs> it would be an overprice. Yeah, thanks. What kind of shots are these? We wanted close-ups of how the cartridge clips are inserted into the magazine. All you see here is the guy's thumb. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll shoot it again. Oh, well, um, the shot you took of that girl. All right, get over it. I told you it was great. Now forget about it. I can't it. forget about it, Sarge. I have to meet this girl. You do, huh? You don't know it, do you? No. You don't know her name, you don't know where she lives, you don't know anyone who knows her. Yeah, that's right. Millions of people live in Berlin, millions of girls. How do you expect to find this one? Well, it might be a little tough. Listen to him, it might be a little tough. Are you out of your mind? Hey, look, Sarge, I got some time off coming, don't I? I want to put in for a three-day pass. Well, you're entitled to it. You might as well take it. Moving around like this, you're no use to me. I'll put it through for you. Where do you want to go, Paris, Switzerland? No, no, I'll... I'll just stay here in Berlin. Oh, no, I know you're crazy. You take a three-day pass and you'll spend it here? <laughs> you don't have to answer this question, but uh, can I ask why? I want to look for this girl. Oh, brother. How do you find a girl you don't know in a city the size of Berlin? Well, in the first place, I remembered when I took the picture, it was 9 o'clock in the morning. People were waiting for a bus, so I could figure she was on her way to work, maybe. Anyhow, if she was waiting for a bus on that corner, it'd be a good bet she lived in that neighborhood somewhere. For all I knew, if I showed up on that corner at 9 o'clock in the morning, she might even be there again. Well, it wasn't much to go on, but it was all I had. So the next morning, I was there at 9. Same crowd was waiting for the same bus. Even the same fat guy was there. Everybody on the picture was there except her. Wouldn't you know it? But I wasn't licked. I got on that bus... I rode a ways until most of the people got off, and finally, near the end of the line, I went over to the driver, and I showed him her picture. Yeah, yeah, she's four, Lan. Hmm. Nine. Nope. I do not know. This bus, it is so crowded. I drive, I take fare. Before the war, I used to have, uh, what is it called in English? Uh, conductor. Yeah, yeah. He would take fares. Now I must do everything myself. How do they expect a man to do this job? I think I quit. If a pretty girl like this rides my bus and I do not notice her, it is time I quit. Tomorrow I quit. I go to work in Stuttgart. Yeah, but you don't know who this girl is. You can't remember her getting on and off. You wouldn't know anything about her? No one knows anyone else. This is not a way to live. I have an uncle who is a farmer. I think I go to work for him. Look, you can't help me out on this girl. That is what I will do. You have opened my eyes. I will work on my uncle's farm. 
Have you ever worked on a farm? Hey, excuse me, buddy. I think I better get off here. At first, I thought this bus driver was crazy, but I was wrong. He wasn't crazy. I was crazy. Because when you start to look for a girl you don't even know, and you have to start asking perfect strangers questions, but you're just asking for trouble. Here they are, minding their own business, and a guy pokes a picture in front of them and says, Hey, do you know her? Well, people figure you're a little nutty. I couldn't help it, though. I was going to find that girl if it was the last thing I ever did. I saw I wasn't going to get rich on that bus. I figured to work it from the other angle. You see, if she lived in the neighborhood of the bus stop, maybe that was a starting point. For sure, somebody would know her. So I started pounding the pavement. I walked into stores and shops and apartment houses. I showed everyone the picture, but everywhere I turned, I drew a blank. Nobody knew this girl. And then a horrible thought struck me. Suppose she just happened to be on that corner just that one time. I mean, supposing she didn't even live in that neighborhood. Supposing she was just passing through. Well, now what was I going to do? Where was I going to turn? Could I stop every man, woman, and child in West Berlin and ask them? And even if I could, suppose she didn't even live in Berlin. Hey, Haley. Yes, sir. What are you doing in the office? You're on pass. You still got two days. Oh, what's the use? I can't find her. I don't even know where to look. I might as well go back to work. Oh, nothing doing. You ask for a pass, you got a pass, you'll use your pass. Oh, that... Besides, I can tell by the look on your face, you're not going to amount to a hill of beans until you find that dame. Uh, what do you want to find her for, anyhow? Oh, I don't know. Don't even ask me. I just got it, that's all. Well, I'll admit it'll take some doing to find a girl you don't know in a town the size of this, but it's unfair to ask you to do it. What do you mean, unfair? A job like that takes brains. And although you're a genius, you really don't have any brains, you know that? Oh, now cut it out, will you, Sarge? I got enough trouble now. If it was just an ordinary guy like me, I would try using common sense. Oh, you would? Yeah, I would. For instance, instead of running up and down the streets firing blind at everybody, I... Well, I'd adopt a point of view. You just lost me. Okay, now, let me see if I can find you. Just for example, if a girl looks so scared, it's a sense she's in a jam. Now, that I could figure out without so, you. So, if it's a real jam, who knows? Maybe it's something that would involve the cops. So, therefore... Hey, Haley, hey, wait a minute! I ran back to the bus stop again. This time, I looked for and found the nearest police station in that neighborhood. I spoke to the lieutenant behind the desk, but all I got from him was the same shake of the head I'd been getting from everybody else. No, this girl didn't look like anyone who was wanted by the police. She didn't look like anyone with whom they'd had any business recently. In short, she was a stranger there, too. Ooh, that wise guy, Sergeant Johnson. And then as I was about to leave, it happened. A cop who was just coming off duty, or coming in duty, happened to check in at the desk. While he was signing in or signing out or whatever it is these German cops have to do, he overheard my questions to the desk sergeant. He kind of sidled over for a look at the picture, and then he tapped my shoulder. I know that girl. You do? Well, who is she? What's her name? Where does she live? Well, uh, I do not know her exactly. I should say, uh, I should say I've seen her. Well, where, where? Where? Now, let me think. Where, where? Ah, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was on my patrol. It was yesterday. No. No. Ah, the, the day before, I remember. Uh, this girl, she approaches me. She says, Ein Schuldiges, bitte. From just that, I could tell many things. Yeah? What? I could tell she was not a German girl. I could tell she was French. Ask me how. All right, how? Because uh, my grandmother was French. And this girl spoke German with the same accent my grandmother. You see? So, this French girl, she asked me, where may I find number 71, Auguststrasse? Well, then, then what did you do? But then I told her. And then what did she do? Then? Yeah. Well, then I would say she went there. Why else would she ask, nicht wahr? Now, what was that address again? 71, Auguststrasse. Well, thank you and goodbye. Uh, where are you going? What do you think? 71, Auguststrasse. Uh, Red, please. Uh, such a hurry. Well, he will soon discover for himself... There's no point in going to 71 Auguststrasse. Not anymore. You are listening to the Proudly We Hail production, 
I'm looking for a girl. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. Young men, when you volunteer for service in the United States Army today, you can rest assured that your best talents and natural skills will be considered in giving you an assignment to your liking. Yes, today's modern army fits the right men to the right jobs, and real merit is recognized with faster promotions and more opportunities. Now, more than ever before, men with above average ability are finding better jobs and more important assignments in the United States Army. Why not investigate an Army enlistment for yourself right now and find out just what you stand to gain? Full information is available at your local United States Army recruiting station. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of I'm Looking for a Girl. <laughs> Uh, excuse me, ma'am. You speak English? Uh, yeah. What happened to the building? Oh, uh, there was a fire. Well, I can see there was a fire. When did it happen? The day before yesterday. Oh, what am I going to do now? I beg your pardon? Uh, the, what was it? What kind of a building? An apartment house? A part? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I wonder, ma'am, uh, did you happen to know any of the people who lived there? Oh, yeah. I live across the street. I knew them all. Would you look at this picture, please? Did, did this girl live here? Uh, no, no. I did not know her. She did not live here. You sure? Of course. I knew them all. There were the Schmitz, the Müllers, the Stallmans, and oh, the photographer, Voisin. Oh, wait a minute. Voisin? Voisin? That's a French name, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Old Voisin was a Frenchman. Poor soul. He, he died in the fire. They took what was left of him out of the ruins. It was not much. He was a good man. Did he have any relatives or, or any close friends around here? No, he was all alone. No one really knew him too well. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, well, ma'am. Why are you asking about old Voisin? Why? I wish I knew. <laughs> Hey, Haley. Yeah, Sarge. What's the big idea? You got yourself a three-day pass, and all you want to do is sit around the office. Oh, I might as well go on back on duty, Sarge. Oh, nothing doing, buddy. You still got another day. Get out of here. Oh, what's the use, Sarge? I'll never find her now. You're not being fair to the rest of the men in the outfit. The idea of a three-day pass is to give a man some rest and recreation. When you took your pass, it meant that some other guy in the section has to wait longer for his. Now go out and have a good time if it kills you. I've got no place left to look for her, Sarge. Oh, the dame again. Yeah. Look, you say she's French, huh? Okay. Yeah. So she must have been on her way to visit this guy, Voisin. When she got there, she saw the place had burned down. She must have found out he was killed. That accounts for the look of terror on her face. So what else can she do? She goes back to France. Now, what are you going to do? Put in for a furlough and go to France to look for her? Take a tip from me, buddy. You're wasting your time. Just look at this picture, Sarge. Look at this girl's eyes. Yeah. You ever seen a face like this? It's... It's, it's so... Well, I suppose you could call her pretty. Oh, no, Sarge. This isn't pretty. This is beautiful. You know, in one sense, she isn't even good-looking, if you get what I mean. But she's beautiful. There's something... In, it shines out from the eyes, lights up the whole face. Oh, brother. Well, this is the kind of girl I've wanted to meet all my life. In the first place, I don't see how you're ever going to meet her. And if by some crazy chance you did, what would you do if it turned out she was married and had a bunch of kids? Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. If she, she is married, she can't be. Look, I'll meet her. You wait and see. I'll find her yet. Well, good luck to you, buddy. Thank you. Try finding her by tomorrow, because after that, you got a heavy-duty schedule coming up. Oh, boy, I wish I knew what to do. Like I said before, Haley, you're a genius, which puts you at a slight disadvantage when it comes to using common sense. If it were just an ordinary guy like me, I'd know what to do. Oh, yeah? Yeah, now, look. You know this guy, Voisin, was a photographer. You know there's some connection between Madame X and Voisin. You could at least call her Mademoiselle X, huh? All right, as I was saying, Voisin is dead, but he's still your only hope. The more you find out about Voisin, the closer you might get to the fair lady in the picture. Makes sense, no? Well, now, I... before you interrupt, genius buddy, here's what the old Sarge would do. Old Sarge would see if there's a photographer's association in town. And you're a photographer yourself. You know how all these guys know each other? 
Well, a word of the wise should do the trick. Sarge, why can't I get ideas the way you do? Yes, indeed, there was a photographer's association in West Berlin, and the guy I spoke to up there did know Voisin. No, Voisin was not a member. Voisin was the kind of guy who kept to himself. Well, did the old guy know of any close friends Voisin had in the group? Well, yeah, Voisin was pretty close with a guy named Hauptmann. Where did Hauptmann live? Hauptmann lived and worked in his own private house located at 75, or was it, uh, was it 79? No, what was that address again? Well, no matter. I could get Hauptmann's address from the girl at the reception desk, so I thanked him. And on my way out, I asked the girl in the front office. Herr Hauptmann? Yeah, you will find him at 77 Wilhelmstrasse. It's very interesting. Why is it interesting? You are the second person who has asked for Herr Hauptmann's address today. Oh, yeah? Herr Hauptmann's a very old man. He's almost retired. I cannot remember the last time anyone has inquired about him. Now, too, on the same day. Uh, t- tell me, please, was this other person who inquired about him a girl? No. Why do you ask? Oh, no reason. Uh, He lives at 77 Wilhelmstrasse, huh? Thanks a lot. I took a taxi to 77 Wilhelmstrasse, and all of a sudden I found myself in a familiar neighborhood. It seems Wilhelmstrasse was on the same block, but around the corner from Auguststrasse. As I looked closer, I could see that Hauptmann's house on Wilhelmstrasse was directly in back of Voisin's burned-down house on Auguststrasse. Well, I walked up the steps and rang the bell. There was no answer. I waited and rang again. Still no answer. And then I noticed a sign on top of the doorbell. It read, Atelier Friedrich Hauptmann. Open daily, 9 to 5. Well, I figured if Hauptmann were out, he would have left a note on the door. Okay, maybe he was in the studio. Maybe the studio was in back of the house. Maybe there was a rear entrance. So I walked around the side and I found the door. It was just slightly open. I was about to knock when I heard what could have been a groan. Before I knew what I was doing, I pushed the door open and walked in. I was in a hallway. Just up ahead was another doorway, and then I heard the same groan again, only this time I heard something else. Where is Vassan? I do not know. How can you ask? He is dead. He died in the fire. It was not his body they took from the ruins. Where is Vassan? I know nothing. Where are you hiding him? I know nothing, I tell you. I know nothing. Yes, you do. One of my men visited him just before the fire. Voisin put up a fight. One of them must have dropped a cigarette into some of Voisin's chemicals. The fire department says that's how the fire started. Voisin won that fight. It was not his body, I tell you. Then Voisin ran out the back way and came here. Voisin wants everyone to believe he is dead. Where is he? I do not know what you are talking about. I shall give you five seconds to talk, and then I shall shoot you. Wait! Ah! What's that? I would not have told him. Why did you come in? Friedrich, my good friend, he would have killed you. No, no. Let him kill me instead. I will kill neither of you. Wassan, you will still function here as our agent. Remember, your granddaughter is still our hostage. Refuse to obey my orders. And I will tell them back in East Berlin. You know what will happen to your granddaughter in that case? I know what's going to happen to you, Buster. Ah. All right, you, Mr. Hopman, call the cops, quick. Uh, who are you? Everything's okay, believe me. You're voisin, aren't you? Uh, Look at this picture. Do you know her? It's Yvette. Yvette, my granddaughter. But they are holding her hostage behind the Iron Curtain. No, they're not. I must think clearly. Fifteen years ago, the Nazis carried her and her mother off to Germany. When the war was over, I heard they had fallen into the hands of the Reds. I came to Germany to see if I could find a trace of her. And this one, this dog on the floor, told me she was still in their hands. Now, now you say she is not? No, she is not. You've been looking for her, Mr. Voisin. She must have been looking for you. The day before yesterday, the day of the fire, she finally tracked you down. She thought you were dead. Then she has been free all this time. They lied to me. She has probably been home in Marseille. Oh, look. Look, we're going to make a phone call and find out, huh? First, I just got to get this joker handed over to the cops. Mr. Voisin, you stay here. Don't go away. The 
guy on the floor, he was part of an espionage ring. And he had been blackmailing Voisin. Poor Voisin. For years he'd been hiding out in Germany, out of touch with everybody. Trying his best to locate his granddaughter. At the same time, she'd been looking for him. Well, the German police and the military police showed up, and I had a big session at the station. And then the colonel called me in, and there were plenty of congratulations, you know. And finally, I couldn't stand it any longer. Well, Zan had an idea Yvette would be living with a cousin back in Marseille, so the colonel insisted we use his phone. Yvette was home, all right. And after Voisin spoke to her, he handed the phone over to me. Uh, look, my name is Robert Haley. I'm an American soldier. I like photography, baseball, and steaks done rare. Are you married? Oh, good. Now, listen, I know I can get a furlough. You stay there, Yvette, you hear? Don't move. I'll be in Marseille tomorrow night. Uh, sir, I, I know I've just had a three-day pass, but, well, after all, I mean, sir... Well, all the colonel did was smile, and all he said was, well, if your section leader, Sergeant Johnson, can spare you. So I asked Johnson. You know what Johnson said? Johnson, who always had so much to say about everything, all he said was... Yeah. So now what else is left to tell you? The average couple, when they get married, say they're going to make beautiful music together. But we'll change that just slightly. What you can say about Yvette and me is, we're going to make beautiful pictures together. Young men of America, today's United States Army is comprised of skilled technicians and specialists who have learned their jobs in the world's finest military technical schools. And now the Army is offering you even greater opportunities to join this elite group of young men and serve your country and yourself at the same time. Your Army now has an operation, a training program, that permits you to choose your own branch and train in the particular job of your own choice. It's called the Reserved for You Training Program, and it works this way. If you're a high school graduate of service age, you visit your nearest United States Army recruiting station and make application for the Reserved for You Training Program stating your preferences of branch and training course. If you qualify and a vacancy exists, you're awarded a letter that guarantees you a reserved seat in the training course of your choice. Now all this takes place before you enlist and it places you under no obligation whatsoever. Then, after you enlist and have your basic training, you're enrolled in your school and begin your career as a highly skilled army technician. We suggest you find out about it right away by visiting your nearest United States Army recruiting station and talking it over with the friendly people there. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Army. This is Ralph Rowland inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. Proudly we hail.